Good boy. Morning, guys. Mark Farash, Protect Dog Training, and Gunzo, who was just closely reaching the end of his one-month period of time with me. Uh, 30 days is usually what I do for most of my programs. And with Gunzo, he was a biter when he came in with a muzzle, if you remember him. He wanted to chew me up for the first two or three days. Then we built our routine. We took the muzzle off. Now we've got him going into public. We actually got him greeting into people. I don't totally trust him all the way. Still got some work. We've got a lot of education to do with the owner because in the crux of everything when we work a dog like this is really about relationship dynamic. And when you've got a dog like this, I can fix it and kind of patch it and recondition the animal. But to keep the longevity going on with the dog's growth and their overall success is going to be dependent on the owner. Because if they don't keep up on it, they don't stay on top of it and really learn and grow with a dog like this, with a strong dog, this dog's going to backslide and he's going to end up being a problem and he'll end up getting put down. That's the sad part about it. So it's all about the owner putting in the passion and the want and the determination to do what we call drive through, meaning to learn and really grow and keep working at the problem. This dog's got a lot of potential. He's still a young dog. He's only about 11 months old, 12 months old. So that being the case, actually it was 10 when he came in, so let's say 11, 11 and a half, somewhere in there. That being the case, um, he is savable, but so much is going to be up to the owner and their relationship dynamic. The more she puts into it, the more she learns, the better she's going to do with the dog. Let's give him a chance to go to the bathroom there. Um, so overall... He's got a lot of problems, propensity for protest behavior, which she allowed to happen with the dog's mouthing and throwing his paws out and doing a lot of behavior that, um, that is about relationship between her and him, right? So I've got my relationship with him. He's still got to go. Boy, he's in the mood to do his thing this morning. So um, I've got him right where I want him. There's still some work to do. So this week what we're going to do is I'm going to actually phase him into the stem collar using it for a specific thing because he has a tendency to mouth and the, the case of the, the matter is that the mouthing even if he's doing it with me and and i have the same situation going on you know dang well he's going to slide back in and doing it with her it's when he's excited when he's happy and he's trying and that's how he expresses himself but he's got to learn not that putting teeth on her or putting teeth on anybody is not allowed and because he's not you could take him towards protection but until you get him balanced and that relationship dynamic gets fixed that's not going to be something that i would offer i won't do it to protection with a dog like this until we we get the owner working with the dog properly we have a proper relationship dynamic and the dog is um got a balanced um, situation where the dog's been balanced and they have growth within their relationship between the two of them and there's a proper relationship dynamic when the owner shows me that and has a good working relationship with the dog and we get to a certain point where we can see that the dog is stable in, in most areas and they have a good uh, safe and working relationship then and only then would I start protection with a dog like this, right? Because he's already came in for a biting problem. He has never bit anybody, but this is a dog that very well could and could be a very, you know, could be a big problem, you know? These are dogs that are getting like this or getting killed all over the place because people don't know what they're doing and they uh, end up either exasperating the problem uh, they try to suppress it. They try a bunch of stuff that they do, and they don't understand that there's, it's a lot deeper than that, right? In this case, this all this stuff, all these triggers, all these emotional places that this dog has been are going to still be there. When he goes back with the owner, he's going to want to revert right back to it. And it's easy for me to understand but and trying to convey it to the owner. I look at behavior as like the old vinyl records where that needle wants to return to that scratch. And when we counter condition it and we work the animal and we do what I've done with him, that scratch has been polished out pretty well with that relationship with me and, me and him. When he goes back home, he's going to want to revert to it. Think of it like two magnets. You ever put two magnets up in the air and you put them close together and you feel that draw, that magnet, it, it's pulling you right back. Okay. That being the case, that's the issue. Okay. The dog wants to return to that old behavior state and he's going to really try hard when he's with the owner and he's going to try to go right back to that same behavior that he's done before. Real important that we don't let the dog slide back to that old behavior pattern. Right. And again, it's like a magnet. It wants to pull back to that. So what we need to do is have the owner learning what she needs to do and not allowing that behavior to draw back to that same old thing because with all those emotional triggers and the triggers in general, this dog is going to want to go right back to that and slip right into it because that's what he remembers. 
her voice tone, her body language, everything in that dog's mind is all about these old triggers. He's gonna want, so she needs to be there to nip him in the bud for any of the behaviors that he shows and understand what's going on well enough. She has enough working relationship with the dog that she can overcome that because that's what this dog's gonna do. And, and it's no training in the world. It doesn't matter how good I get this dog trained, he can stand on his head and do everything. But you remember those, that little, uh, the writing to the computer is already there in the dog's mind. So he's gonna want to revert to that same thing and, and go right back to it. And like I said, it's like a draw, it's like a pull, right? So we gotta not let the dog do that. So it's real important that I convey that to the owner, that she understands what I'm talking about and does the best job she can and, and gets him back with me if she can because we can keep him out of the go sliding back to that. But it's just gonna take work, it's gonna take work, right? All right, Mark Fresh, ProTech Dog Training, signing off with the yak session talking about Gonzo, who we're going to break into a, a stem collar. Now, in general, my my opinion and the way I work a stem collar is I do not take in a stem collar. I don't layer it in. I don't put it into the lexicon of his overall training. You got food. You got toys. You got uh, a certain amount of how we treat him with dominance and, and relationship dynamic. And then we've got a, a stem collar. We've got all kinds of tools. we got pinch collars, stem collars, choke chains, uh, you know, all kinds of things that we use, food motivational toys, things that get the dog into us. Um, so that all being the case, it's all about the tool and how you use the tool. And my personal opinion is I don't like to put that stem collar on a puppy and teach him the lexicon of a stem collar when they're young. I don't believe in it. I believe in setting up a communication baseboard that's based around a lot of different things and build that dog's mental attitude and how he works with me and what he does and then as he's getting good enough and he really understands what's be, going to be happening, then I will put the stem collar and only then, and I will layer it in properly in a very nice methodical way. Now I've got one more week to go, but I want to solve the problem of him mouthing because he's doing it with me. He's going to do it with her even more. So I'm going to take the stem collar and I'm going to, I'm going to be doing it a little bit more aversive on the backside, but I don't want him to understand. You know, you can't come in and just start zapping the shit out of a dog with a stem collar. It just, it's not conducive to learning and growing, and that's not the way we use a stem collar. There's a lot more science and logic and understanding of using a tool such as a stem collar. And notice I'm not calling it an e-collar, an electronic collar, or a shock collar, because that's all negative bullshit that's been put out in society to give you a negative connotation about a tool that if used properly is very very powerful in regards to what it can do for you not power and how high you can set it and zap the shit out of the dog that's the wrong way to use it depending but in a general sense i don't use a stem call i use it on low impulse and i teach the dog to understand what that impulse means and he you give the power to the dog and he turns off the stem collar and that's how i break in or i layer in the stem collar i will take my time with him this week i will layer in the collar and then i will get to a point where we're using it towards my specific uh, problem that i want to have solved uh, in the right way so i'll give but i don't want to i won't hand this a stem collar to an owner and say here and then start teaching them because with like gonzo she has so much more to learn she has so much to learn and so much to grow in relationship dynamic with this animal before she'd ever get handed a tool like that from me okay that's my personal opinion it's how i break a dog into a collar it's a, that we do things the right way right so i'm going to load him up in the truck i just did our walk around property load him into the truck and we're going to go out and work the table and start kind of breaking in our our stem color aspect of things a little bit we'll see how he responds but um, it's all about giving him the power and teaching him how to turn off a low impulse right that's the first thing and if you guys are professionals you want to learn how i how i do that just go to the dob site and if they're even up anymore i don't know but it's um old school is the folks the Dobbs that were doing the uh, seminars many many years ago with Tritronics and they had an excellent series and it really this is just the way I've been using stem collars for years and then you grow by virtue of uh, doing right you work enough dogs you start to really get a good feel for it and you start to understand your and your skill level grows right so it's not something I would just hand to a customer and, and say here this is what I want you to do with it because they have no clue about dog psychology and how a dog learns and there's so much for them to have to learn and get a proper relationship dynamic with the basic tools with a six foot leash long line choke chains things like that they need to have all that so they understand the psychology of learning and learning theory before they ever go to a to a stem collar and that's just me all right mark fresh protect dog training signing off talk to you later